Hey guys, this is Ian Fairley, and welcome back to another episode of My Dinosaur Series. Last time on My Dinosaur Series, we talked about how the ostrich-like dinosaurs, such as the Ornithomimosaurs, were fast runners, like the ostrich. We furthermore talked about how these species came in different shapes and colors and sizes. We even talked about how Gallimimus was a bit more akin to chickens than modern ostriches, and how Dinochirus was the largest of its kind and was able to use its claws for defense and leaf eating. These species may have been equipped with feathers on their bodies for warmth instead of flying. And speaking of flying, we are going to be talking about a group of flying reptiles for this episode, called the Pterosaurs. I know my series is called the Dinosaur Series, but it never hurts to talk about other species of prehistoric animals that lived alongside dinosaurs during the Mesozoic Era, right? Pterosaurs are flying reptiles that were closely related to dinosaurs, but aren't exactly dinosaurs themselves. They have wings like those of modern day birds but possibly may be featherless according to most paleontologists in the world. Similar to dinosaurs, the pterosaurs came in all different appearances and sizes. While smaller pterosaurs had sharp teeth and long tails, medium-sized to large-sized pterosaurs had short tails and no teeth at all. Some may have had crest on their heads or snout, while others had none at all. Most pterosaurs will likely eat fish, but could eat possibly other things if necessary. On the wings of a pterosaur are small claws only birds have on their feet and not wings, proving that pterosaurs can crawl on the ground like those of modern reptiles. And like today's modern geese and other birds, flocks of pterosaurs would travel south during the cold times and return home when the climates are warmer. Dinosaurs and other animals would travel south as well. This is called migration. You'll learn more about that in the future. But for now, the species of pterosaurs we will talk about for this episode are Pteranodon and Quetzalcoatlus. For starters, let's talk about the long-crested Pteranodon, shall we? The name of the pterosaur, Pteranodon, means toothless wing because it had no teeth but two wings on the side of its body. The fossils of this pterosaur have been discovered in Kansas, Alabama, Nebraska, Wyoming, and South Dakota of the central United States. Year 1870. The skeleton of Pteranodon had a wingspan of 7 meters and 23 feet over half the size of the modern elephant. Fossilized fish bones found in Pteranodon's stomach was proof that the reptile was a fish eater, just like today's eagles, pelicans, herons, and hawks. Pteranodons may have lived near and on giant rocky boulders in the middle of the sea, which is also the place to nest its own eggs. Most known modern birds to live near boulders are pelicans today. Almost 90 million years ago, pteranodons would fly near the sea to scoop fish out of the water. Not only to feed itself, but to feed its own young as well. However, they can be easily vulnerable prey for prehistoric sea monsters. That's right folks, aquatic creatures have also lived in the prehistoric past. During and even before the Mesozoic Era, and also after. But anyway, back to the Pteranodon. The crest on its head was believed to be used for display, but that probably wasn't the case. Most people confuse Pteranodon for a pterodactyl in most cartoons that only some kids may have watched. Well, I know I would. That was until I learned more about pterosaurs than I could ever imagine. But, I could still call it a pterodactyl if needed. In fact, when the first wing bone fragments of Pteranodon have been discovered, it was actually confused to be called Pterodactylus. Notice I put the letters U and S next to the word Pterodactyl. 
But then, six years later in 1876, the first skulls of Pteranodon have been discovered with no teeth. Mainly the pterosaur was thought to have teeth, but that theory is false. That's why the name was changed to Pteranodon. While Pteranodon was equipped for flying, it spent more time soaring through the air like a plane than flapping its wings like a tiny bird for propelling itself. What made Pteranodon so successful at flying was that its hollow bones reduced its 35 pound body weight and the vertebrae in its back were attached to its ribs to provide great support for wing muscles. Too bad we won't be riding this guy for a long time. It would be fun, but at the same time it would be scary for those who have acrophobia, the fear of heights. Now that we've talked about everything you need to know about Pteranodon, it's time to talk about our next pterosaur for this episode. The Quetzalcoatlus. The name of the pterosaur Quetzalcoatlus means feathered serpent from the name of the Aztec and Toltec plumed snake god in some kind of mythology. The fossils of Quetzalcoatlus were first discovered in Texas of the USA year 1971. Fossil evidence suggested that Quetzalcoatlus probably walked on four feet though it was more suited for flight holding out its enormous wings to soar through warm air currents of the wind. The paper-thin bones supported a light body with an extremely long neck, holding its head topped by a short, bony crest. Quetzalcoatlus may have lived inland and probably fished over lakes and rivers. And like most creatures, Quetzalcoatlus may have been a scavenger that ate dead carcasses of dinosaurs similar to how vultures feasted on the dead carcasses of other animals. Apart from scavenging on dead food, Quetzalcoatlus probably even feasted on small animals, including baby dinosaur hatchlings. Quetzalcoatlus was known to be the largest pterosaur of its kind, with a giraffe's height of 30 feet and a wingspan of 35 feet, about the width of a modern tennis court. If pterosaurs did wear feathers on its body, at least most of them would adapt through cold times. Quetzalcoatlus in its time might have been as migratory as the great albatross, traveling at a flight of 10,000 miles within 46 days, whether it was in a group or even alone. Almost all animals, including birds, are migratory, meaning they move south to find food warmer climates, and other resources. Well, folks, that's it for this episode. If you liked this video, please leave a like in the comment section and subscribe to this channel. Next time on my dinosaur series, we will document about a bunch of prehistoric reptilian sea creatures that roamed the ocean and came in various different species, appearances, and sizes. This is Ian Farrelly, and thank you for listening.